Hey friends, my name is Yi, and you're watching Yi Makes It Easy. And welcome to a new video for IGCSC and Maths. And today, we have a new video on indices, the law of indices. And this video only focuses on the questions for indices. And these questions are from Dr. Fortinet or DFM. So you can check it out in the description or you can check it out in my website where I have all of the resources and the lesson slides for Ad Maths and other subjects. And before we get into it, don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. So let's start with the first question, it's quite simple. 2 to the power 6 is equal to just 2 times 2 over 6 times. And this equals to, let's change the color, 64. So the answer is 64. So for question 2. Write down the reciprocal of 2, and the reciprocal of any number is just 1 over that number. So the reciprocal of 2 will be 1 over 2 here. So the answer is just 1 over 2, or 1 half. 1 over 2. And question 3, write down the, number, uh, the value of 4 to the power 0. It's a trick question because anything to the power 0 equals 1, or should I say a, a to the power 0. So anything to the power 0 is 1. So the answer of 4 to the power 0 will be, sorry, 1. So the answer is 1. And question 4, write down the value of n. We have this right here, the n equation. So in indices, a times will be equal to plus the power. So p squared times pn equals p6. And this will equal to p to the power of 2 plus n equals p6. So you have the base of p, they're both the base p, so the uh, power has to be equal to each other. So this means that 2 plus n equals 6, hence n equals 4. So the answer is n equals 4, right here. And question 5, write down the value of, or simplify n to the power of 4 divided by n to the power of a half. So as we see here, a divide is equal to minus for the power in indices. So it will be n to the power of 4 minus 1 half, which will just be n to the power of 7 over 2. And so that's the right answer. So the answer will be to simplify it to become n to the power of 7 over 2. And then we have question 6. We have 7 to the power 2 times 7 to the power 3 divided by 7. We'll just break it down bit by bit. So for the top, we have 7 to the power 2 plus 3 because it's a times. Times equals plus. Remember, remember that in indices. Over 7. So this would be 7 to the power 5 divided by 7 to the power 1. We don't write 1 right here because it's implied. So in this case, where it's divide, from the top, remember that divide equals minus in indices. So the final answer would be 7 to the power of 5 minus 1, which is 7 to the power of 4, as a power of 7. So the answer is just 7 to the power of 4. And then question 7, simplify x to the power of minus y and bracket minus z. So let's break it down. So we know that a negative times negative equals a positive. So we'll just get rid of the positive first. So it's easy to see the answer. And in this case, remember that if there's a bracket around a power and then there's a, another power outside the bracket, like in this case right here, there's two right powers. It means times in indices and it's not to the power of, it's times. So it will be y times z, which is just yz or zy. So it would be, let's change the color, x to the power of y, z. And remember we got rid of the negative, because a negative times a negative equals a positive. So the answer is s, sorry, x to the power of y, z. Oh, y, z, right here. We have quite a lot of questions here, so just watch till the end. We have th around 30 questions, so stay tuned. 
So here's question 8. We have x here and y, that's 2 to the power of p and 2 to the power of q. Express 2 to the power of p plus q in terms of x, n, or y. So we can, we're going to break this down to the power of p over q. We're going we're gonna to like reverse engineer it and break it down into two different variables or constants, like two different things. It will be 2 to the power of p times 2 to the power of q, right? Using the, the law of like indices, if it times, it becomes plus. And notice that 2 to the power of p is the same as this. And 2 to the power of q equals this. Right? So you can rewrite this as the final answer of p becomes this. And 2 to the power of q is y. So the answer is just x, y. So x, y. And then express 2 to the power of p minus 1 in terms of x and or y. So we're going to rewrite it to 2 to the power of p divided by 2 to the power of 1, or just 2. So we know that 2 to the power of p, as usual, equals x. So we're going to rewrite it as x divided by 2 to the power of 1, which is just, for the final answer, x to the power of 2. That's it x to the power of 2. And for question 10, we have 2 to the power of 2q in terms of x and y. So we're going to break it down. 2 to the power of 2q can also be re rewritten to 2 to the power of q, 2, 2. And of course, this can also equal to 2 to the power of 2q. But in this case, it wouldn't be too useful because we can't know what the q becomes. So we're going to get rid of this, oh, wrong thing, we're going to get rid of this, and this will be a much easier form, because we know that 2 to the power of 2q, right here, is equal to y. So the final answer for this, it's y, and then don't, remember, don't forget the power, square. So this will be equal to y square. And let's move on to question 11. We have 2 to the power of y equals 1 over 4, and trying to find what y is. And we haven't done logarithms, which I will cover in the next few videos, but intuitively we can see that we, we need a negative power so that it becomes a 1 over something. So let's start from that. Let's say it's 2 to the power of minus 1. This will become 1 over 2, which is not the one that we want. So it has to be a negative, but it's not, the, it's not a 1. Which, if you see here, it's a 4 over here, and 2 to the power of something has to be 4 after like reciprocal it. So 2 to the power of 2 would equal 4. That means that the power would have to be 2 to the power of negative 2. So that after you reciprocal it, becomes 1 over 2 to the power of 2, which is 1 over 4, which is what we want. That means that the final answer is that uh, y equals minus 2. And moving on, we have question 12 of this right here. We can break it down, we can break it down slightly to become 2 to the power of 4 times root 9. And we can rewrite it as in this form so that it's easier, easier to see what's going on, like this. So we know that in this case right here, you can just times it out together to get 2 to the power of 2. So it becomes 2 to the power of 2 times the square root of 9 is just 3, so it's 3. And if you type it out in your calculator of 2 to the power of 2 times 3, the answer will be 12. So the final answer is 12. And then we have the next question, question 13. It's a similar one, but it's a bit harder. But we'll just uh, we'll, we'll look into it now. 27 times 3 times 10 to the power of 8. And we can see that we can split it into 2 because 27 you can be rewritten as a, a base 3. So it will be 4, 27 times 3 times 4, 10, 8, as so. And we know that 27 can be rewritten as 3 to the power of 3 times 3, 1 times 10, rewrite it as indices form, 
1 over 4 because it's, a, it's not a cube root or it's not a square root, it's like 4 root. So this can be re-simplified as 4 to the 4 root of 3 to the power of 4 times 10 to the power of 2. And let's highlight this just to make sure that you understand this part here and this part here, right? So three. if we rewrite this, this the left hand side, we can see clearly that this just equals 3 because 4 times 1 over 4, just it just, it just becomes 1. So it will be 3 times the right hand side of 100. And the answer would be 300. Well, let's rewrite in another, in another color. It will be equal to 300. So the answer is 300. And let's move on to question 14. 8 root 8 can be written in the form of 8 to the power of k. So it's an indices thing. So let's split 8 to the 8 into its indices form. It will be 8 and 8 one half. So we know that when we have a times, we add the power up together. So it will be 8 to the power of 1 over 2, which gives us a final answer of 8 to the power of 3 over 2. Because you add 1 and 1 over 2 up together to get 3 over 2. So the final answer is k equals 8 over sorry 8 to the power of 3 over 2. In question 15, we have this complicated looking one. And let's do it bit by bit. And we can realize that question 14 is the same as question 15 on the top. You can see here. So let's just use the question the answer from before. Let's rewrite this, a to the root a, 3, a2, can be rewritten as a to the power of 3 over 2. And in the bottom, it's just a to the power of 2 over 3, because you bring the root below the power. And then this just means that it's a to the power of 3 over 2, minus 2 over 3. And if you type it in your calculator, 3 over 2 minus 2 over 3 will give us a to the power of 5 over 6, so that's the final answer. That means that k equals a to the power of 5 over 6. And question 16, it's a simplification problem as well. So we have a, a number here and some constants. So we're going to make sure that we don't mess it up. So let's start off with the number. 3 times 4 we will equal, to, let's, let's rewrite it actually. 4, um, so we will times the number together first to get 12 and then m and we have for m to the power of 2 and m to the power of 3 so we're equal to m to the power of 2 plus 3 because it's a times it becomes a plus for indices and for r is 1 plus 6 so this then equals to after simplifying we'll get 12 to the power of m 2 plus 3 is 5 and r 1 plus 6 is 7 and that's the final answer. 12 and m to the power of 5 and r to the power of 7. And then we have question 17. We have a fraction over here. It's similar to the question before. Let's rewrite it. 36 k to the power of 3 m to the power of 4 30 k5 m. We can start off by cancelling some constants first. Like for example, m, it's m, we can just cancel it because it's actually just 1. So it will be m cubed on top and no m below. And as for the k, we have a k to the power of 3 on top and k to the power of 5 below. And you can divide both sides by k to the power of 3, which will mean that the top bone have a k, but the bottom will have a k to the power of 2. And then for the third, let's write it here first. And for the thirty-six over thirty, we can divide. We can divide both sides by six to get its simplest form in fraction, which will get us the final answer. So thirty-six divided by six will become six m cubed, and thirty divided by six will become, will become five k squared, and that's the final answer. So six m cubed 
over five oh, over five k square. Then we have question eight. We have simplified this, and we can see that inside the bracket we have a four and the h to the power of two over three. So we have to apply this power onto both of those. Don't forget the four. So let's rewrite this h two over three. 2 over 3, 3. So 4 cubed will become 64. 64. And h to the power of 2 over 3, we can times the power together. So 2 over 3 times 3 will be equal to just 2. So it is 64 h squared. So that's the answer. For 19, it's the same as just now. Don't forget the different like, things that you have to apply the power to. So let's rewrite it, 9w2, y6 and a half, which is basically a root, a square root. So 9 square root is 3, well let's rewrite it in another color, become 3. And then w square, the 2 times 1 over 2, right here, 2 times 1 over 2, become 1. Because 1 over 2 times 1, sorry, 1 over 2 times 2 it becomes 1. And then we oh, let's change to yellow. And then six times one over two will become three because it's math. So it becomes this. And let's highlight this. And that will be our final answer. Three y y sorry three w y q. And question twenty. We have 2 to the power of 30 divided by 8 to the power of 9 equals 2 to the power of x. So you would notice that there's different base for 2 to the power of 30 and 8 to the power of 9. So you have to convert both to the same base, to the simplest base, to match the 2 to the power of x. So it will be 2 to the power of 30 divided by 2 to the power of 3, because this is equal to 8, equals to x as so. And it will be equal to 2 to the power of 30 divided by 2 to the power of 27 equals 2 to the power of x and remember in the part the rule of indices divide equals minus so it will be 30 divide sorry 30 minus 27 which will equal to x so it will equal to 2 to the power of 3 and the 3 is equal to x so x equals 3 and for question 21, given that 3 to the power of minus n equals 0 0.2, find the value of 3 to the power of 4n. So to get from 3 to the power of minus n to 3 to the power of basically 4n, you have to times, you have to times the bracket out here by minus 4, so that this, we get rid of the negative and we add a 4. So basically this means that we have to apply 0 0.2 we have to apply a power of minus 4 right here so that it matches with the minus n to get 4n so if you type it in your calculator this will get you 1 over 0 0.24 which let me just type it out which is just 625 so the answer is 600 25. And let's move on to write out the value of 8 to the power of 1 over 3, which is basically quite simple. It is cube 8, which is 2. Quite straightforward. And question 23, write down 16 to the power of 3 over 2. And remember that the bottom is the root and the top is the power. So we're going to do root 16 and cube. So basically we're going to do root 16 first so that it is easier. Let's just get rid of the 3 here. Like this. And root 16 is just 4 because 4 times 4 equals 16. So it's 4 to the power of 3. Which in this case 4 to the power of 3 is equal to 64. So the answer is 64. And for question 24. We have work out 4 to the power of minus 2, it is quite straightforward as well. 
To get rid of the negative, we have to do reciprocal, 1 over 4 to the power 2, which is basically equal to 1 over 16. 1 over 16. And then we have 25, find the value of 64 to the power of minus 3, 2 over 3. So we're going to do 1 over 64 first, because we have to reciprocal it to get rid of the negative power. 1 over 64. 2 over 3 and we have uh, to do this we have to just do the cube root of 64 first so it's easier and square and the cube root of 64 would be 4 so it'd be 4 square and then basically it just simplifies to 1 over 16 oh it's the same as just now so 1 over 16 and then we have 26, find the value of 27 over 8 and brackets to the power of minus 2 over 3. And to get rid of the, uh, the power, the negative power, when we have a bracket, we just inverse it. Inverse the inside by itself, like reciprocal the inside. So this would be just equal to 8 over 27, 2 over 3. So we're going to apply the, um, right here, the cube root first because it's easier. It will become 2 over 3 squared, which our final answer is, let's see, it's 4 over 9, and that's the final answer. And then we have 27, which is just a similar question. And let's rewrite it, 216 over 1000 minus 2 over 3. We can get rid of the negative by doing 1000 divided by 216 to the power of 2 over 3. And we're going to do the cube root as well because it's easier. And the cube root of 100, so 1000, is just, a t it's just 10. And the cube root of 216, it's a 6. So it'll be this. You can see that we got rid of this cube root right here by doing a uh, cube to both, both, num both numbers. And this will simplify to, or expand to 100 over 36, which you can simplify it into our final answer in the simplest form of 25 over 9 after dividing both by 4. So 25 over 9 is our final answer. And then we have 20, question 28. It's a similar question. We're going to rewrite it. We're just going to reciprocate it now. It will be 25 y squared over 64 x to the power of, uh, 6 and this. So we're going to do the root first because it's easier. So on the top it will be 5 y and the bottom the root of 64 will be 8. So it will be 8 x cubed because 6, let's just highlight this. Yes, 2 times 1 over 2 will become 1. Right here, 1. And then, and then for 6 times 1 over 2 will become 3. And that's basically the final answer. Because you can't simplify it further. So it's just 5y over 8x cubed. And 29, we have this right here. We're going to uh, write it out first f12 1 over 3 so the top has a number and the bottom doesn't so just take in mind of that so to simplify the number 8 to the power of 1 over 3 which is a cube root of 8 which just gives us 2 and then e to the power of 6 times 1 over 3 for the power just becomes 2 as well because 6 over 3 equals 2 and then f to the power of tw uh, 12 times 1 over 3 is the power will become 4 and let's just highlight the power too, so that it's easier to see. And then the bottom, we have this. So it's quite straightforward. So the answer would be 2 to the power of, e, sorry, 2e to the power of 2, or 2e squared, divided by f4. And then we have question 30. We have a similar question like x this, y, x, y, and this. So it's a simultaneous equation, and we're going to start off by just writing 
rewrite it, the equation. 2xy squared equals 32, and xy equals 32. Oh, let's just rewrite the x. x here. So we want to get rid of one of the variables, either x or y. In this case, we can just get rid of x because y has a y squared. So we should divide both sides by this. 2 divided by 1 is just 2. x divided by x it will cancel out. And y squared divided by y will be y. And 32 divided by 32 will become 1. This means that y equals 1 over 2. Because 2y equals 1. So that's one thing to know. So if you put it on top here, 1 over 2 equals 2q. So the q has to be a negative power to become 1 over 2. And in this case, we can spot that q equals minus 1. Once we have q equals minus 1, we can move on to p. So we have xy equals 32, and we know that y is a half. So x half equals 32, and x equals 64. So number 2. So this means that 2 to the power of p equals x, or 64. And this means that p equals 2. Let's simplify 64 to the power of 2, which will give us 6. That means that p will equal to 6. So the final answer is p equals 6, q equals minus 1. And then we have question 31. Right, uh, for x bigger than 1, write the following expressions in order of size. So we're going to look at it in terms of its own power. So we know that minus 2 is the smallest. So number 1, the smallest will be x equals minus 2, the smallest. The second smallest will be the power after minus 2, which is a, uh, like a number bigger than minus 2, which is just 0. So x power 0. And after that, we have to find a number bigger than 0 for the power, which is 1 over, one over 2, which is the closest to 0. 1 over 2. After 1 over 2, we have to find one that's closest to 1 over 2, which is just 1, x. And then after x, is just the remaining x squared. So that's the final answer. And moving on to the last question, we have y equals 16 times 10 to the power of 8k, where k is an integer. So write in terms of k in standard form. So we're going to write y equals 5 to the power of 4 equals 16 times 10 to the power of 8k. And since we apply a 5 over 4 to this side, we have to apply it to the right side as well, so that it's equal. I like notice there's no power. And then we're going to apply it now. 16 to the power of 5 over 4. You first do a 16 to the power of 1 over 4 because it's easier, which is just 2. And 2 to the power of 5 is 32. So it would be 32 times 10 to the power of something over, some, over something. And we just uh, write a k first to ignore the, uh, the k. So for 8, you would do 8 times 5 over 4. And 8 times 5 is 40. And 40 divided by 4 is 10. So it would be 10. So you would think you would just leave it here. But it's actually incorrect. Because we need a standard form. And in the standard form, this number right here has to be smaller than 10. So let's drop this out. So to be smaller than 10 for the 32, we have to add a decimal. And to add a decimal, it would be, let's rewrite this, 3.2. We will have to add a tenth onto the 10 to the power of 10k. So we 10 to the power of 10k plus 1. You can see that we added a decimal right here. We move the symbol to the front, and you have a plus 1. And in the case where you need to move the, de the, decimal, back, the decimal back, it will be minus 1 instead. But in this case, it's plus 1 because you have to move it forward. So the final answer would be 3.2 times 10 to the power of 10k plus 1. And that's it. And that's it for this video for IGCSE at Maths for indices questions. And if you need this worksheet, you can find it in the description or in my website at www.yemisteasy.com or you can find it in the description.
and I hope you find it useful and helpful. And if you did, please hit the like and subscribe and ring the notification bell so that you don't miss out on any future videos. And if you have any comments or constructive criticisms, just drop them off in the comment section and I'll reply to them as fast as possible. And don't forget to check my Instagram in the description for more daily content and check out my website in the description if you need any resources or any more information about my channel. Or you can type it out in your browser at www.yemisseasy.com And I hope you all find it useful and helpful and I'll see you guys in the next at max video which will be CERT Which is the rules and examples for CERT first, then the questions Until then, stay safe and happy learning.